Hey everyone, Docwell here, and welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be about the patch update 7.30e, and we have Marcy, the new hero that's been released. I think everyone obviously knew that this hero was going to be released, but it was just when the patch was going to drop. And interestingly enough, they released Marcy here, and we'll take a look at her in a second, but they also released a patch that was kind of a minor patch, like an E patch. It wasn't 730 or 7.31, which is kind of interesting. I don't know that they've ever really done something like this before, but it is because, like, TI was all messed up and the timing of everything. So it is a pretty interesting patch. Marcy is the biggest part of the patch. So let's just jump into her here and see how she works. I've never actually done a video like this for a patch where a new hero has been released. So I think I'll just do this from now on whenever uh, it becomes a thing, you know, <laughs> in the future. We'll make a dummy target here. We'll make an axe enemy. We'll level ourselves up to, like, 14 or something. We'll level the enemy up a little bit too, make sure they're tanky. So, basically, this hero is a very good... I don't really know what position this hero is going to play, but this hero has a ton of positioning-based abilities, so which are really valuable, almost like in any role, honestly. So, Dispose, pretty good ability. It's almost like a cookie from Snapfire, but like a melee cookie that's like a reverse cookie kind of thing. Like, instead of launching people forward, it launches them back, um, and then it stuns them. So, you can do this with enemies like I said showed you there or you can actually you know do it with allied heroes or creeps to send them ahead and obviously then they stun whoever they're on so in that way it is sort of like cookie but it's more like uh, melee you don't like shoot it out but also obviously you can grab enemies and bring them back so it adds that extra versatility that cookie doesn't have where you can basically stun people by you know grabbing them and you're also like throwing them back to your team so i imagine in laning stage this is going to be insane because you can just like basically run up to the guy you click him a bunch and then you throw him back like towards your creeps then the creeps are hitting him and you're hitting him the enemy or your allied hero is hitting it's like insane like a positioning ability like this is crazy throughout most of the game but even in the laning stage it's going to be crazy um i think it's just really really good and that's stun duration 2.1 seconds that's really really high that's a very very long stun so that's really really good this next ability is probably one of the most interesting abilities in the game honestly um probably her most interesting ability in that it's like really unique um so basically what happens is you click the ability then you click it on a target it can be i think ally yeah it can be allied it can be a creep it can be an enemy whatever it is and then you have to hold it down and then you kind of choose where you want to jump from so you kind of like use another hero or another creep or something to vault off of them and then you attack the enemy or like uh, slow them you do uh you do damage and you do a movement slow so i'll show you this here and now axe is slowed and you can like attack him and things like that so this is a really really good mobility spell has a pretty low cooldown nine seconds you can use it a bunch um there's a move slow there's damage you know you can jump off of like anything pretty much like you're running away you can even use the uh, person you're running away from to, like, jump off of them to, like, a, over a cliff or something like that. It is kind of crazy. Now, I will say it's something you kind of need to get used to because I don't think any other... It's like a vector targeting thing, but I don't think any other ability in the game requires you to click an enemy and then hold it down to, like, decide what happens. So it's very unique in that way. It's not something that I think we've seen in any other ability in Dota um, that I can think of. So that's really cool. It's really unique. I think these two positioning... Spells are just going to be super OP in a lot of ways. And then the next two spells are kind of very different from these two, where these are more like, not support, but they're stuns, they're mobility, these kinds of things. These next spells are like straight up carry spells. Um, but they also offer a little bit of support too. So this sidekick ability, it's pretty much just a lot of lifesteal and a lot of bonus damage. It's almost like in power from Magnus. Now it doesn't give you cleave, but it's just like a farming um, ability. And it's like... Uh, a team fight ability that makes you stronger, but it only lasts for six seconds, so it doesn't really last that long. But also, you can cast it on yourself. You just do more damage and life steal and stuff. But you can actually cast it on an ally, and then you both get the buff for six seconds. So it is one of these things that um, it's kind of like a support-ish ability, but it's also like a carry sub like ability as well for yourself because um, you can use it on other people in team fights, but you will also use it on yourself when you're just like casually farming and stuff like that. The mana cost is pretty low. Um, it basically has a an uptime where it's like six seconds um, duration, and then it's a six second downtime, and then you can just use it again. So it's a pretty good ability for, I mean, this lifesteal is insane. 50% lifesteal is a lot. This will like put you up to full pretty quickly if you have a lot of damage, if you're playing this hero from like a core role. Um, and getting a lot of damage on the earth. So that's going to be an interesting ability. And then the next ability, Unleash, which is the ultimate, as the creeps uh, 
are really weird here. Basically, you click this, and then you kind of go into ultimate form, and you do these, like, series of attacks, almost like Ursa's Fury Swipes. Um, and every time you do that, obviously, you're doing a ton of damage, but, uh, and it lasts for a long time, which is kind of crazy. So you do these, like, combos, and then you can't attack for, like, a short duration. You'll see the debuff come up there. And then once it's gone, you can unleash another series of attacks. So it's like Ursa's Overpower. You can just get a ton of attacks in. Um... CC strikes per fury. Now that's level two, it's up to four. Uh, but there's also a pulse. So there's a radius around there where it does like damage in a radius. So we can refresh. We can do it again. We can see the axe is taking damage over here. Um, and he's also slowed, which is kind of crazy. Um, and so there's a movement slow of 30% and an attack slow. So it's basically like a. It's like a carry ability where you're doing a ton of damage, but you're also like slowing everybody in the team fight. It's just like this crazy multiplicity thing where it just. I don't know, it seems extremely OP, because you're doing a ton of damage, it's Fury Swipes, but then you are, or Overpower, whatever it is, Overpower, yeah, maybe not Fury, Fury Swipes, Overpower, whatever it is, it's the Ursa ability that makes him tack a bunch, and then it does, like, this insane slow and a ton of damage, like, I think this hero is gonna be crazy. So, a lot of people are saying, oh, this hero's offlane, it is a strength hero, it does have decent stats, I actually think this hero might be mid or carry, I think the offlane might obviously would be a good thing. It might be good because of the mobility, um, the stun. But like I think mid might be the the thing because it seems like it also has like damage abilities. This is the thing. It does do a ton of damage. Yes, there's team fight control. Yes, there's all these things. But it has mobility like a mid. I think it could potentially lane mid with like dispose and stuff. It can get away from harass. It has a ton of life steal, which is good. Um, but then this ability, it, like, does a combination of things. It does a lot of team fight control mobility stuff, but it also does a lot of damage. Like, I can see this hero being insane in damage output, which is not necessarily, like, usually, you know, offlanders have some, some kind of big ultimate, like axe or something. There's some kind of way that they stun people for a long time. Yes, she has dispose, which I guess you could say is a good stun. Um, I mean, it is. I'm not saying it's not. Um, and then, you know, Rebound, which is a good mobility spell. But I just think the other parts of her kit allow her to just do so much damage that... I mean, I think initially she'll be good in, like, any role, honestly. But I think eventually she'll maybe... I mean, it all depends on the, the buffs and the nerfs. Like, it, if they decide to nerf this stuff or they decide to nerf this this stuff... If they nerf her more damage-oriented stuff, she might be more of a utility hero. If they decide to nerf more of her mobility and stun, then she might be more of a carry hero. I think it just depends on that. But I think, actually, right now, she's just overpowered. I think she's just OP. I think you could play her, like, any core role, maybe even support, and she's just crazy. Because everything about her is is good. She just is, like, good overall in general. Um, let's see if we can go to, like, see her stats here. Yeah, like, her attack's pretty good. Her uh, armor's pretty good. Her movement speed's, like... She's kind of average all around, but she's also a strength hero, so she gets pretty tanky. She does good damage, all these kinds of things. So that's Marcy. I think she's going to be super strong. Obviously, a new hero usually is pretty strong, but oh, it'll be interesting to see how she develops. I really I really think she might be like a good mid hero, to be honest, um, because I think she's going to be put, outputting insane damage with the, with some of her abilities. And like lifesteal, she's going to be impossible to kill, and that mobility is just crazy. So anyway, that's Marcy. Really, really excited to play that hero. I think she's going to be super cool, super fun. Um, but you might want to ban her in all your games because she's probably going to stomp you if, if the enemy picks her. Um, so now we'll go to the patch updates. I'll just go over these very briefly for you. Um, first we're going to, we're just going to say small camps, um, the XP bounty reduced. This is mainly a mid, uh, thing where it's just a slight nerf to mid. Basically they're not going to get as far ahead comparatively to everybody else because obviously they're farming that small camp a ton. So that's pretty much what that does. Battle Fury buffed. I just don't think this is going to get Battle Fury back to where, um, it's like to be a thing that everyone's buying anymore. Plus bonus damage increased, but then quell bonus damage is reduced. So it's kind of like, I mean, it's better for against heroes and stuff, but whatever. It, I don't think that's a big deal. Um, bottle, they're just nerfing bottles. So you can't just like hold runes forever. Buff to Crimson Guard because no one's buying it. Another nerf to Echo Saber. So I think this is the big thing. We'll see a nerf to Echo Saber and a buff to Mage Slayer. I think on a hero like Slark, especially if there's a lot of magic damage in the game, I think now that Mage Slayer is just better than Echo Saber because Echo Saber's been nerfed so much and now Mage Slayer has... Um, the debuff duration has been increased and the attack speed is now 20 attack speed. That's actually a lot of attack speed. Um, like, look at... You see Mjolnir here. 70 attack speed that that has been buffed as well but like look at how much attack speed you're getting from mage slayer which does a ton it gives you tankiness it gives you ma a ton of ma mana region like twice as much mana region or more i believe what 1.75 oh no two mana region so not not twice as much but a significant amount more um i just think mage slayer is overall better 
than Echo Saber on something like Slark and things. I think you'll see people picking this up, and maybe you'll see Echo Saber not being picked up as much if the enemy has a lot of like uh, magic damage, uh, because this this uh, I think this. It's kind of the tipping point for this thing, um, and maybe it might. This might be the tipping point for Echo Saber. It's still really good, but I think it might eventually fall off. Fay grenade. They just removed the like Earth Shaker thing where it was like stupid. Uh, Falcon Blade. I think they just I, this. I don't even think Falcon Blade was good actually, but now they just made it even worse. So I think it's actually in the dumpster. Um, I, people tried to buy it, but it just I just don't think it was ever that good. Um, Guardian Greaves buff because no one was buying it. Heart of Trask buff because no one was buying it. How of the Iron Will nerf because people were just rushing it and TI people were like rushing it first item on offlane so it was OP. Uh, Holy Locket uh, nerfed. It was pretty good. I don't I don't know, think that was like necessary, but it was very good on certain heroes. Um, Hurricane Pike uh, buffed because no one buys this <laughs> ability or this uh, item. No one even completes the um, the Dragon Lance. No one ever completes that really unless they desperately need it. Lincoln Sphere buffed with plus two all stats, which is pretty good. Lincoln Sphere has been kind of in the dumpster for like, I feel like a while. So we'll see if this, this comes back. I think it can come back. It's just, it's always going to be situational because it's one of these things where you only really want it if you can block big spells. But then if every, if the enemy team has a bunch of single target spells, it just feels bad because then they can just easily, you know, cancel it. So it's just weird. Mage Slayer, like I said, I think it's going to be a big thing this patch. I would suspect it's kind of been buffed a lot. So I think it's going to be pretty significant. Mjolnir has been buffed a little bit. I still don't know how relevant that's going to be. And then Psychic Headband no longer triggers Lincoln Sphere. So that's like a just a buff to Lincoln Sphere, kind of. Um, bonus damage reduced. Satanic was pretty good, so they're nerfing it. Um, they're nerfing Shadowblade and Silver Edge, which is probably needed. They're, they're pretty OP. So it nerfed a Tiny and other things like that. Um, Basher, a buff because, you know, Basher was just not, Basher and Abyssal have just not been good ever since they removed the Blink. Swift Blink was too good. They they uh, nerfed that. Veil of Discord, no one is ever buying this. Um, but now it no longer amplifies attacks like a spell. So I don't know. That's like a nerf, I feel like. I don't really know why they nerfed this. I mean, I don't think it was that good. Maybe I'm just missing something, but I just don't ever see this in games. But I don't know. Maybe I, I'm missing something completely. Vlads, they buffed Vlads. But they... Um, nerfed the Helm of the Overload. So it's almost like basically just making Vlad's more of an independent thing because Vlad's has been dead for a long time until Helm of the Overlord came along. So now they're kind of just like um, changing this a little bit to make it, uh, I think it's, what is that, 100 gold and that's 100. So it's kind of the same. They just like, Vlad's itself is a little better. Witchblade, intelligence increased. I think Witchblade was still decent, but it had been nerfed a couple times. So now they're just buffing that and then they're buffing Wraith Band because nobody buys Wraith Bands anymore. They pretty much never complete them. It's very rare that I even complete them. So now they're just giving it a straight, a little bit of a buff, which is good. Alk, insignificant buffs. Axe, I think insignificant buffs. I don't think that's enough to change that. Bane, uh, nerfs, obviously needed a nerf one is one of the strongest heroes, just damage reduction all around, cooldown increased, and these kinds of things, I think that makes sense, Broodmother's in the dumpster right now, so overall buffs, I still don't know this is enough to make Brood different, uh, better, I just think the change that they did just, you know, killed the hero, Chen, small, uh, buffs here, but I still don't know that that's enough, it's kind of one of these heroes that's either good or not, just depending on the patch, Doom, cast range reduced. I think Doom was in a decent spot. I don't think he was that OP, though. Um, but this just makes it so that you can't just get off Doom from long range. I don't know that that was necessary. I don't think it's a huge deal, though. Drow was buffed. I think Drow is getting some buffs here and there. Drow could be really, really strong. When it's a good Drow game and no one can get on top of her, she does so much damage. Now she's even doing more damage. Um, and she has better movement speed, which is good for laning and all that kind of stuff. So look out for Drow. Drow could be a kind of sleeper hero this patch. Uh, nerfs to Earthshaker. Earthshaker was really, really good. Um... And also nerfs to kind of the morph combo as well. Obvious nerfs to Elder Titan here. Um, just like better, more more a core Elder Titan um, rather than being able to leave things at low. You know, it's just a, it, at the high levels, it's better in some ways, but like at the low levels, it's not as good. So basically you can't have like a four Elder Titan that's just like owning everything um, and being like another core, even like more damage than the mid sometimes. Ember, this hero was kind of OP and they did nerf it slightly, so... Uh, mana cost, he's going to have more mana issues with the Scepter, and now he's just not going to be able to escape as much. That 0.1 second cast point for um, activating Fire Remnant is significant when you try to escape and stuff like that. Grimstroke, they changed this back to the original seconds that it was, like before, when they, basically when they gave this the 4 second duration before the stun goes off, it feels horrible now. Like, you can never get the stun reliable, uh, reliably stun the enemy. So now it's 3 seconds back to the way it was. I think this hero might be really good now because of that, because that one change made this hero crap. I think. Io, they just nerfed it here because Io was uh, 
was just overpowered. Really, really good in TI, so it makes sense. Keeper of the Light, um, they increased the magic resistance reduction. So I think this hero was good, but they nerfed a bunch of other things about it. It's just kind of a weird hero because it seems like it's almost OP or just sucks because of the nature of it. It's like a support that doesn't have a stun and all that. Kind of, it's just kind of odd. Um, I don't think this is enough to make it relevant again. Lena, very, very good hero. So they just made her a little bit worse overall with the movement speed, attack speed, and these kinds of things. Uh, just small nerfs there. Uh, Lion, small nerfs as well. Don't think it's a huge deal, but Lion was really powerful. Lycan, they kind of nerfed the Scepter ability, made it just more, like, less spammable, kind of more just every time you have alt, the uh, wolf has alt, no more weird attack range stuff. Magnus, we obviously saw this coming. Huge nerfs here. Um, basically, the Horn Toss is not a stun. It's like a overall slow. So people can blink out of it, people can BKB, people can do stuff like that um, to the horn toss before you skewer. So this hero may be dead. No more crazy like double RP kind of things. Like you can't just blink in horn toss skewer and then RP, all, all this crazy stuff. Um, so this hero, it's not necessarily dead, it's just not as good. Horn toss is not nearly as good now. It's it's countered by a lot more things. Uh, Medusa, they just kind of nerfed this hero. I think this hero was just generally okay. Not super OP, but was still, like, kind of stomping in pubs. They've been nerfing her over the past few patches, and she still wasn't going away, so now they're just like, get out of here, Medusa. We don't want you anymore. Uh, Monkey King, slight nerfs. Monkey King was one of the heroes of TI, so makes sense that he's going to be nerfed with movement speed, uh, cooldown increased um, for both of these abilities. So it just makes sense. But sometimes, like, it just means when cooldowns are increased, it just means that you can't, like, spam them as much, but you can still be really good with the hero. The hero can still be relatively decent um, if you know how to play him. You just have to be more careful when, uh, with when you're using your spells. Morph, um, overall nerfs, just trying to get rid of these morph combos and things like that that are happening. Omni Knight is a terrible hero. He was really, really good, and then they, uh, changed him and I thought that he was still good he was still kind of being picked and he was still seeing some action but then he just fell off a cliff um so his degen aura I just need to get rid of this ability this ability sucks nobody likes it it's terrible they're buffing it but it doesn't matter OD they're kind of they've been consistently buffing OD and it might be time where OD becomes annoyingly OP again I will have to see but they keep kind of like giving OD small buffs and OD might be OP Pudge they keep buffing this hero, which is really cool. Uh, so now mana cost is reduced, which means you can spam hook more. You can kill those creeps, those big creeps, uh, in the early early part of the game. So you can, you know, get levels, get farm, kind of like a Moran. It's pretty awesome that you can do that now. But the big thing about the hero was this shard where you could just save people. So they decreased the the ally regen that you get, which I think is probably needed, but I don't, it's a small nerf. It's not a big deal. I, think just, I still think the dismember ally, like, eating them is still really, really good. I don't think that small change is going to make it that much worse. Pugna, they keep increasing the cast range, which is really good for pushing towers. So look out for Pugna becoming more of a thing um, if it's a good patch for him. Just, just look out for that because he could be really, really good. Snapfire, um, uh, the stun duration for the shard just decreased. Snapfire was really good. Picked a lot and banned a lot in TI, so it makes sense that they're nerfing um, Snapfire a little bit. Spectre, just small nerfs, making, you know, the ags just not as good, but I still think it's really good. It just can't be spammed as much. Um, Spirit Breaker, they're just changing this hero to make it buffed. It wasn't picked at all in TI, but it seems really, really strong. When you see it in pubs and stuff, I think this hero is on the brink of becoming broken. Like, I think people just don't know how to use it correctly. It might even be like a carry or something crazy. Like, this hero is crazy with all of the different ways that it, like, perma stuns you, does so much damage. Um, it just does so many things. It just seems crazy. And it's like an anti-split push hero. I think it's very, very good. Uh, we'll see what happens. But I think these buffs could even put it over the edge. Storm Spirit. Um, basically, you can't spam Electric Vortex in lane as much um, to secure kills. It was like a one-point wonder. But, you know, now it's a little bit more punishing if you don't put more points on in it early. So we'll see how that works out. And then just overall laning nerfs. Tide. Mana cost increases. It kind of hurts him because... Like, he can, he can run out of mana. He's not a high mana hero, and he wants to be spamming this. So that kind of sucks for him. Tinker, mana cost increased. Um, Scepter bonus range. So basically, you know, this is... When you're spamming this, it's just, you know, you can't spam as many in team fights and in the lane and that kind of stuff. And this Scepter bonus range was really, really good. It's one of the things that made the hero so good when you got um, Ag. So now that's just a little bit less. You have to be more careful. It's not as OP. You can die a little bit easier um, when you're spamming laser. Tiny, overall huge nerfs. I think Tiny and Magnus were the two that everyone was expecting to get huge nerfs. So Tiny, 
just not as overpowered. They just basically nerfed all of his tree grab, tree throw, you know, talent numbers, all these things to just make him not doing, ins- not like three hit towers, you know, that, that was insane. Not like just instantly delete people and stuff, um, all this kind of stuff. So they basically just nerfed his numbers overall to make him not as good. Um, so I think, I don't know that Tiny Carry's dead, but I think he might be dead. We'll see what happens though. Uh, Void, uh, cast point increased, shard bonus reduced. Basically, this hero was pretty strong. They're just kind of nerfing him a little bit. I don't know that it's enough to like completely kill the hero, but you're not going to get blown up completely full to zero. Um, he's a little bit easier to catch in these kinds of things. So you can catch him before he dissimilates um, and those kinds of things. So nerfs to him. Warlock, they're just steadily trying to buff this hero, make him relevant. I think he's good in some... Um, he could be good in some pubs, but just in pro, like high level, though, he just... He just sucks. He's just a, like the Warlock. He just doesn't do anything without his ultimate. And so, you know, when his ultimate's on cooldown, you have like two minutes or whatever it is of just doing nothing um, with the hero. So that's why it kind of sucks as a support. Weaver, overall nerfs, both carry, support, all those kinds of things. So they're supporting the, they're, they're nerfing the regen, they're nerfing the scepter, they're nerfing the talent with the damage. They're just nerfing it overall for everything. We'll see if that's enough to kill the hero. I don't know. And then lastly, we'll see Zeus is getting buffed. Zeus is crazy. Um, it does so much damage, it just keeps getting buffed. Now it has real decent move speed, um, and now the stun duration, you're gonna like perma-stun people. This hero, I think, is on the brink of just becoming OP. I think in pubs, this hero might just be completely broken. It already does tons of damage, and obviously if you get on top of him, you can kill him, but I don't know. Zeus is kind of a scary hero. It's on the verge of becoming like actually relevant even in, maybe even in like high-level Dota. So keep, uh, keep a lookout for Zeus. So that is the patch. Marcy, probably OP. Obviously Tiny... Um, Magnus, all of these heroes nerfed. I think a big winner is Mage Slayer. Look out for that um, item. I think it's going to be picked up a lot. Um, look out for Drow. Look out for Grimstroke now that they changed that back. Um, obviously, Leno, Lycan, Lion, all these people, all these different ones nerfed. Monkey King, ob- the obvious nerfs. Look out for OD. Um, could be really good. Look out for Pugna. Look out for Spirit Breaker. Um, and then the rest were just like the obvious typical nerfs and look out for Zeus. So that is the patch 7.30E. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you think Marcy is OP because I definitely think she is. And, you know, what you're expecting from the patch, how you think the meta will develop. Leave a comment below, like, comment, subscribe, all of those kinds of things. Look at the links in the description for my Discord. If you want to join there, requesting replay reviews for my coaching. Also for my Twitch, which I'll be streaming every Friday and probably be streaming more in the future. So as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.